Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with PS Off or Piss Off or subscribe to Mr. Sujano. Uh, anyways, here, this emulator just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, 2025 May 07 is the latest update. And this update's got some fixes, some improvements, and some brand new stuff, like an Italian translation. On top of that, they say this release is supposed to fix issues with Intel CPUs in some games and some AV player crashes and they fix some file system issues. Next up, we're talking about the Nintendo Switch 2, and it's being reported in a few different areas that we've now got an early look at that SOC. We're gonna get a much better look as the hardware actually releases, but right now it's being reported as confirming to feature an NVIDIA T239 SOC. Videocards.com has a whole bunch of technical information about this chip available, so if you're interested in it and wanted to learn more about it, like everything we talk about, links are in the description below right at the bottom. I don't hide my sources. Now, it's being reported that this engineering sample, the motherboard and the chip combined cost around 138 US dollars. Now, if that cost holds true, and who knows here, but if it holds true, add in the cost of the Joy-Cons and the screen and the casing and the dock and all of that, and maybe Nintendo is justified in the price of the Switch too. Let me know your thoughts about that one. Anyways, here just taking a look as well, in terms of overall power, there have been some predictions. So there was a simulation that was performed using the information that was available, and they're saying here that the Switch 2 is gonna function similar, it has similar architecture to an RTX 2050 GPU. Uh, so they did some testing here, and they say that the overall Switch 2 could deliver something like GTX 1050 Ti level performance, with the LSS and GTX 750 Ti level performance in handheld mode. Let me know your thoughts about that one. They say here it would be around 7 to 7.5 times faster than the Tegra X1 in the original Switch. Now, if this is true, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised here. And even if it's just 7 to 7.5 times faster than the current Switch, that's a huge improvement from one generation to the next. I could be wrong with that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And on that same vein, next up here, we're talking about the original Nintendo Switch. And if you've got an original Switch and you're hesitant to update to the Switch 2, I don't blame you. I'm in the exact same boat. I'm not pre-ordering the Switch 2. I've got no intention to because of this reason here. Well, a few other reasons, but this is one of the big ones. Nintendo reaffirms plans to continue supporting Switch with new games. So in Nintendo's latest fiscal report, they states that the company moving forward will continue to bring out new titles for the over 100 million people worldwide who are playing Nintendo Switch. You shouldn't really be surprised about that one considering Nintendo is known to do that from generation to generation. I'm just hoping here the titles that continue to come out for the Switch will not just be shovelware and not mainstream stuff. I'm very curious about that one, but I will be paying very close attention. On a side note here, it's worth pointing out that there are already some big games headed to the Switch that have been announced. And those games are like Capcom Fighting Collection 2. You might not think that's a big game, but I do because CBS 2 is in there. Uh, on top of that, Animusha 2, Tamadachi Life. Yeah, that's headed to the Switch as well. Uh, the next Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, and even more. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff headed to the Switch already. But I am curious to see if the next Zelda, for example, will be on both the Switch and the Switch 2, or if it's going to be a Switch 2 exclusive. Next up, we're talking about Killer Instinct and Killer Instinct 2 emulation with Rich Whitehouse's Big Instinct. If you're a Patreon supporter to Rich Whitehouse, you've already got access to this. It has just released. And Video Game Esoterica has you covered if you wanted to see the emulator in action here. I think this looks really, really good. If you're not a Patreon supporter for Rich, it's going to release, I think, for everybody else in about a week. So you might have to be patient here, but yes, it is releasing to the general public. And overall, if you're a fan of Killer Instinct or Killer Instinct 2, this emulator may be up your alley. And speaking about releases, next up here we're talking about The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask on Xbox. Now we've talked about the Zelda 64 recompiled projects in previous videos. It's a PC recompilation of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Anyways here, someone has got it working, or a number of people have got it now working on Xbox. Taking a look at the video, and it does seem to be the full featured version of Zelda 64 Recomp. It doesn't seem like anything has been sacrificed here. It's even got mod support. If you are curious and wanted to learn more about it, like everything we talk about, links are in the description below at the bottom. I'd recommend checking out the description of this video. There is a special UWP build. And speaking about recompilation, next up here we're talking about 
D compilation and talking about Lego Island. So it turns out that Lego Island has been decompiled. Now, the last time we talked about this project, I don't think it was at 100% complete. I think it was like 90 some odd percent, but don't cite me on that one. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Uh, either way here, I think this is a huge milestone for the project. And if you're interested in Lego Island, check out the video. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. And RPCS3 developers are still on fire. There's been a number of updates here. This thing gets updated almost every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. Anyways, there's a couple of new things here you may be interested in. So I think the first item here is super cool, and it's especially cool if you're a fan of Gran Turismo 6. I guess if you're not a fan of the game, you probably won't care about this. But they've implemented a virtual Logitech G27. As far as I know, this is still being tweaked and worked on, but at the same time here, I mean, it's got stuff like force feedback and rev lights. I think this is super, super awesome. Additionally here, for RPCS3, if you're a fan of Metal Gear Solid 4, you might like this update. It seems they've squeezed some additional performance out of CPUs here. They tested with both a Ryzen 8545HS and, uh, sorry, 8945HS and an i7-12700K. So they went from 115 FPS to 130 FPS on the Ryzen, so a 13% improvement and 160 FPS to 190 FPS on the i7, an 18% improvement. And thirdly here, just not for the Windows folks, for the SDL pad handler, they've added in DS3 button pressure. And speaking about new stuff, next up we're talking about Mafia, the old country. This game has a release date for August 8th of this year, and we now have a price, about 50 US dollars. Taking a look at the Steam store page, everything is listed. And if you're not a fan of Denuvo, you're not going to be a fan of this. The game does incorporate Denuvo. Additionally here, Mafia the Old Country has an FAQ on their website, and there's an answer to a question that you might not necessarily be a big fan of. I would say the answer is causing a bit of stir online, just a little bit. Uh, but the question is, does Mafia the Old Country feature an open world? And the answer is no. Mafia the Old Country is a linear narrative-driven game. And speaking about stuff on Steam, next up we're talking about Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. If you're a fan of this game, like a lot of people are, it's got a very positive review score. It was released at the beginning of December. Uh, this game is now Steam Deck verified. Now, some people were playing this on the Steam Deck before, but it was just announced the other day that the game is now officially Steam Deck verified, and this came with their update for Hotfix 2. And speaking about Steam Deck verified, next up we're talking about Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which has a mostly positive review score, and it was released this year. This game is now also Steam Deck verified. So this was also just announced with their latest update here, release version 1.508.0.0. And taking a look here, they say various performance optimizations related to Steam Deck and updated the default preset for Steam Deck to improve performance. And speaking about performance, next up we're talking about System76. And System76 have just unveiled the Serval WS laptop. I would say this thing is going to be a performance powerhouse. It's not cheap though, it's priced at $3,000 or $2,999 if you wanted to be specific. Uh, anyways, it is shipping late May. It features a 2560 by 1600 resolution screen at 240 hertz, up to 12 terabytes of storage and up to 96 gigs of RAM. And it features an NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti GPU. Additionally, here with the CPU, they're not messing around. It's an Intel Core Ultra 9 275HX. Scrolling down by default, it does have 32 gigs of RAM. I don't think many people will need to upgrade from that, but if you wanted to for an extra 300 bucks, you can go up to 96 gigs of RAM. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a pretty big powerhouse. Next up, we're still talking about Linux stuff, but switching from powerhouse to efficient and talking about the Raspberry Pi. And there's a brand new update here to Raspberry Pi OS. It features some very interesting things, some very cool things like an updated kernel to version 6.12. They've got improvements and tweaks to screen locking, auto login. They've got a brand new printer application. They've got better touchscreen handling and even more. This update is always is 100% free. It's all open source stuff. And if you wanted to update, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And continuing to talk about Linux stuff. Next up, we're talking about one of my favorite Linux distributions, because I've got a bunch of favorites here, and that is Linux Mint. Uh, Linux Mint has a brand new newsletter here talking about the next big update, which is version 22.2. .2. It's going to be called Zara. And LMDE 7 is going to be called Gigi or Giggy or 
I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, anyways, here, 22.2 uh, Linux Mint is based on 24.04 Ubuntu. And LMDE 7 is based on Debian, not Ubuntu. Interestingly, they talk about how PewDiePie adopted Linux. We talked about PewDiePie putting out that video a while back. Uh, on top of that, there's some minor changes here to Linux Mint. Um, I would say here, the, the one thing that I'm very curious about is the kernel they're going to be using for this. I'm hoping it's 6.12. I'm hoping it's not 6.8. Um, not to say 6.8 is bad or anything like that, but I would just like to see a bit of an updated, a more updated kernel for this version. Either way here, I'm a big fan of Linux Mint, and if you're interested in checking out Linux, Linux Mint is one of the go-to recommendations. It's just, it's easy, it's simple, and it, it just works. Next up here, we're talking about The Simpsons Tapped Out. Now, we talked about this game a while back when it was delisted and no longer available. If you're interested in the game, you may want to check out Team TSTO for some more information here because they appear to be trying to preserve it as much as possible. They've announced that a private server is now available for iOS. To start playing, you'll need to sideload the game onto your device as the game is no longer available through the App Store. Additionally, here if you're on Android, I believe they've got stuff up and running as well. And they say here, tap your time away again. Team TSTO is building a community-driven private server. Our goal is to ensure fans of The Simpsons Tapped Out can continue enjoying the game they love. And last up here, we're talking about the NVIDIA RTX 5090. And uh, well, this is not good news if you're scared about being hacked. And I guess this is great news if you're a hacker. <laughs> Apparently here, the RTX 5090 can crack an eight digit passcode in just three hours. Well, that is great news for the NVIDIA RTX 5090. It's probably not great news if you've got a numbers only passcode. And this is where strong passwords are very important. So that's with a numbers only passcode, three hours to crack an eight digit passcode. If you've got lowercase letters only, it goes up to eight months. If you've got numbers, upper and lowercase letters and symbols, uh, someone's going to be sitting around for about a thousand years to crack that passcode. So I think the big takeaway from this is not necessarily to highlight the 5090s power, but I would say just to highlight the importance of a strong passcode. Uh, also here, something to be mindful of, maybe not concerned about, but mindful of, take a look at ChatGPT 3 and 4. Uh, it goes from 1,000 years with a single 5090 to five or even three months. And that is, uh, well, it's at least worth noting. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Feel free to discuss anything we talked about in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.